In this video, we are going to be explaining this structure here to you. But because I like drawing pictures, I'm going to draw a couple of pictures to help you out. Now, you may have noticed that I'm not Lewis. Lewis, who am I? Yeah, so uh, this is Primrose Kitten. Uh, you probably should recognise the voice if you've been looking at uh, some of the other hundreds of thousands of videos on YouTube with her on it. Um, she's a chemist talking about some of the chemical side of things and I'm talking more about the physics side because if you're doing GCSE physics or GCSE chemistry, you still need to know the same information about the structure of an atom. So what we've got here is a model of the atom where we've just got some uh, dots to show the neutrons and protons inside the nucleus of that atom. And these are surrounded by uh, different orbitals where, or different shells where we have our electrons. We tend to have two electrons in the inner shell and then eight, eight and so on. And it's the properties of these uh, electrons in the outer shells that actually define some of the chemical properties of all of these different elements. Here are two elements that I've drawn. This one up here has four neutrons, three protons, and then three electrons on the outer shell. This one here has three neutrons, three protons, and then also three electrons on the outer shell. So this is our nuclear notation, and really we have a couple of numbers that we put to the left-hand side of the chemical element. Now the chemical element, again, you'll have been doing this for years in chemistry, this could be HE for helium, LI for lithium, it's just one or two letters that are the shorthand version of that long name. The one at the bottom is called the Z number, and this stands for the number of protons. And it's the number of protons that defines the element. Now the other number, which is often the larger number, is given at the top, and this is the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of that element. Now using this notation, it's very easy to represent different elements. So the one over here, for example, uh, how do we show that, the one at the top? So this one, we'll first of all look at the number of protons. So we have three protons, so we're just going to do it over this side yep. so we've got a bit more room. So we'll put a three there. The number at the top, the mass number, is the protons plus the neutrons. So that is four plus three equals seven and the third element which has a mass of seven is lithium. lithium. Now you don't have to know that you don't have to recall all of the different elements and what they weigh but there's definitely ones that come across all the time and I think definitely some of the lighter ones uh, you know it's quite a nice challenge to try and maybe try and remember the first 20 in order. I uh, taught myself the first 20 in order for my GCSE. Exactly, so if um, we can do it, you can do it as well. But it's um, you'll just become more familiar the more you do this. So uh, this one here is the first atom. And it says that you've got uh, three electrons as well. Three electrons as well, yes. This number down here in an atom, the atomic number, the number of protons, will also equal the number of electrons. And that's because the negative electrons balance out the positive protons and it's got no overall charge. Now this second atom down here again has three protons. The neutrons are three, the electrons are three, giving a mass of six. Now it is the proton number, the atomic number, that tells us the identity of an atom. So this one is also lithium. It's just lithium that doesn't weigh quite as much. And if we could show this in Lego, again, this Lego is my thing, uh, we might have three protons and three neutrons, sorry, and four neutrons in this lithium nucleus. Uh, we're kind of ignoring the electrons at the moment. But what we do is if we have the same element, but then we have a different number of neutrons, it behaves in exactly the same way chemically, but now it's got a different mass. And this is what we call an isotope. Isotopes are naturally occurring. They occur all over the place. And the mass number that you see on the periodic table is actually an average of all of the naturally occurring isotopes. Mm -hmm. 